Hey, I'm Dev Patel. And I'm Jordan Peele. And today we're talking about directing. And our movie, Monkey Man. And more, even more specifically, your movie. Oh, man. Um, which is one of my uh, new favorite movies. <laughs> and I'm, I'm just very uh, happy to be a part of it. I love you, man. If a man wishes to challenge the gods, he must become more than a man. He must become... <laughs> Let me ask you the first thing. Okay. What attracted you to this little gremlin of a movie? When I first heard about the film, I didn't actually even realize that you had directed. I just heard that Dev Patel is starring in a revenge action film. <laughs> I gotta see this. This is a perfect casting. And then when I saw it and realized that it had an incredible director, whoever, whoever this was, and then when I realized it was you, I was like, oh man. Yeah. This guy is about to go on the ride of his life. It was like a... It was a pretty magical moment for me. I was like, as a film had been dropped by our previous studio, He Who Shall Not Be Named. Yep. And then I'm like kind of licking my wounds. I'm in the countryside of England doing a low budget horror film. And then I get this call from our agent and he's like, have you heard of this guy, Jordan Peele? I was like, come on. And he's like, Jordan's seen it. He wants to talk to you and today. And we got on the phone and you, you, the first thing you said is tell me everything. Like, I know you've been through the works. Tell me everything. And we spoke for like three hours. It was like a therapy session for me. Wow. And um, I knew you had yeah. been through a lot. And <laughs> watching the film, you can see someone who, you know, from a directing standpoint, from an, an acting standpoint alone, this is, this is an incredible feat. But from a directing standpoint, I was just blown away. And I mean, I think to really get down to it, what I saw immediately in that cut was like, this guy is making movies the way they used to be made. <laughs> he's making a good film here, and he's, he's giving us everything. It's like it's it, it's so it's so generous. Yeah. We do we get the the action that's better than any modern action I'm looking at, and then the amount of of depth and the amount of attention to story and us believing in this particular revenge. Yeah, yeah. thank you, man. Love it. And it was like you you spoke to all of the kind of corners and intricacies of the film that like you understood what I was I mean has one of the kind of heavyweights of kind of genre filmmaking right now you know and you've really kind of busted the door open for a lot of people that look like myself and yourself you know you, you, you know the first time we spoke and you, you you spoke about like culturally what this could mean you know infusing the genre with you know kind of our breed of action and also like giving people like vegetables in an entertaining manner that was huge. I mean, this is a movie, it's, it's a perfect movie for Monkey Paw Productions because they ain't ready for it. No <laughs> one, you know what I mean? It's one of these movies they ain't ready for. And yeah. so in some way, you sort of saw the future and saw a film that kind of shouldn't exist, but, sh but should, yeah. you know, and you, 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 you fought it. So anyway, I love the film. I'm, 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 I want to ask you about what you went through. So this is a, this is a good question. You write the script. And at what point did you know you had to direct it? Was it from the beginning or was it somewhere along the process? Man, to be honest, I came up with the idea and I didn't think I had the tools to be able to birth that vision. Whoever was closest to me, my friend Paul, I pitched it to him, he started writing. And very early on, he's like, look man, every time I'm on the phone with you, you kind of like, it's flowing out of you. You gotta you got to, got to write this with me. So I reluctantly like took a seat, you know, in front of the computer and started writing. I kind of locked myself away in a, in a cafe in Koreatown in LA for about a year. And we just lived and breathed this thing. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I sent it to Neil Blomkamp, the director of District 9, and I was like, yo, Neil, and we'd just done a film. And I was like, you know, you, you could do this and you could get it off the ground. And I, you know, I went to Canada and hung out with him in his studio. And he's like, look, man, again, this is, this is, this is you, you know, it's in your pores. Like I've never been to India, blah, blah, blah. And he, I reluctantly kind of like fell into the, the driver's seat, the director's seat. And mm. that's kind of been the process throughout. It's like not taking no for an answer, wherever there's a glimmer of light to try and see this thing through and get one more foot on the ladder. That's, that's been the process. It's like, it's kind of like, it's been a ferocious process. You know, there's, there's, there's been a lot of prep, but actually it's a lot of adapting, a lot of things that went wrong, a lot of chaos and, you know, it's kind of just by any means necessary type of filmmaking. 
When you first made Get Out, what was that like and how long had it been gestating in your head? Every film I've made has been uh, just a, a horror show, both in the <laughs> genre but in uh, the making of it. Yeah. It's hard. By, by definition, yeah. it almost feels like I'm not really directing unless I'm pushing myself past my own personal comfort yeah. zone. And I had some some disasters to overcome on Get Out, but I was, sometimes it's these adversities, these challenges that give us opportunities to make yeah. the film what it was always kind of meant to be. It's the restrictions that make you more creative, yes. right? Yes, yes. I think, you know, sometimes I'm, I'm, I curse the pandemic for all of the troubles it put me through, but I'm also like, I got to be on an island living and breathing this with 450 individuals and we all became part of this singular molecule to just birth this thing. And it's funny because when your name first came up and we started talking, you know, philosophically, not only is it ironic that your company is called Monkey Poor and this film is called Monkey Man, but I saw someone that, Key and Peele for me, it's like, I, I grew up just like, it was life for me, you know, the amount of joy I got from the show and you just being, as an actor, just watching you be a phenomenal performer, like a chameleon and, you know, being able to steal scenes in quiet moments and being able to sit back and come in, I was just like the cadence of what you did in that chef's kiss, but you okay. managed to all of a sudden just take this huge radical swing in a different direction and, you know, to step out so far on a gangplank like that and do that, I mean, Everyone must have been saying, like, where did this come from? Like, how did you do it? But I, I felt great courage in, in knowing that you were going to, you know, you were, we were going to be under your umbrella because you'd kind of stepped out of a, I'd say a shadow, but it was a bright shining light into an even brighter light is what I'd say. Man, but look, I, yeah. I, I, love, I, I, I love hearing that from you. Yeah. And, and my... Um, my, you know, my experience, as you know, of, of meeting you in this film is it, is it feels like, okay, I, I get... Um, I get a, a, a contemporary who I can trade notes with, yeah. who I can so do this, with, <laughs> who I can hear the war stories yeah. um, from, and and you know when I'm you know you're right I've I've got this comedic background that yeah. just forces me to like be obsessed with getting everyone in the audience. You yeah. know, it's like it's like a laugh. You know, you want everybody. You yeah. don't want to. And I think what I was so impressed with um, Monkey Man is you you have a, an innate sense of the moment to moment. I mean, you knew this film so well before you, you made it, but like I said, it's very generous to the audience in that way. You have a very good sense. It's a full meal. <laughs> it's a full meal, and the moment to moment, the audience is getting led on a, on a, on a journey, and yeah. they're allowed to be wrapped yeah. with the story that you've given them. So um, it feels like, um, you know, somehow we kind of we've we, we come we come from different yeah. places, but we've arrived at some of the same principles in, in yeah. our filmmaking. Um, and that is like audience, get, just give the audience what they what they want. Yeah, and, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I think yeah. it. I mean, it, one of the first times I saw it with a group of people was actually with you and the team at Monkey Paw. Like seeing it with like a few people in a room and understanding, like, wow, this actually could play not just on a little TV, but could play in a, in a cinema. And you pushed us to, you know, find a pacing that would make those things sing. And, you know, it's kind of like adopting an annoying little brother is the way I saw it. And I was like, okay, there's Jordan there. And he's, you know, I'm coming in and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm pushing it and doing this. And, and you, were, you were very gracious in like letting us like, you know, test things and, 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 and fail wonderfully at times in order to kind of like, you know, not only did you guide us in the right way, but I think you let me, let, let me attack the notes and the kind of studio process in a way that still, you know, kept the soul of the film alive. You know, th thank you. And yeah. this is, you know, these are, every film is so different. Every yeah. collaboration is so different. You know, I remember reading about Steven Spielberg and how, um, you know, when he produces films, you know, he, you know, he looks for, you, you know, to, to work with people of just crazy, immense talent. And my- <laughs> Crazy and, being the word. Yeah, yeah crazy, <laughs> definite crazy, yeah. craziness going on. But he, um, you know, the key is he's, he will give suggestions, but ultimately he knows the same thing I know, which is you're the only one that knows the answer, mm. Dev. 
you 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 you're gonna you're the guy who's got to sift through all the notes and pick up what's right for the movie. And in the end, I watched you do that every step of the way. Yeah. So thank you for that. I, I'll take the credit, but I think a lot of the credit I'm getting is is this timing of you know being in a place where you are like <laughs> almost broken by the yeah. film, yeah. and you just you know and you were you were ready yeah. to come back and and finish strong and you yeah. Know, yeah, so you, you joined you. us on the last leg of a marathon, and then then it became a mad sprint, and it was a beautiful, glorious sprint. Well, um, look, I want to ask you a couple things yeah, about yeah. actually what what you found as a uh, on set as a director, because that's when I wasn't around. I only yeah. know the war stories. So one thing is script or improvisation. How did you find in, in terms of being strict with the words yeah. or being fluid? I think, you know, it, it was very case dependent. There's actors like Charlto Copley, who happens to be in District 9. He's a guy where I, I, I met him at a restaurant in L.A. and I pitched him the movie, which ended up being hours and hours. And he's like, okay, I'm in, I'm in. And you know, everyone had to come in and quarantine for two weeks on this island. So even if you had a day or three days of shoot, but you know, Charles, Charles a dude where you give him a structure of a scene and like one or two lines to hit, and he just, he goes. Mm. And he's, you know, crowd interaction, he's playing off all the 150 extras that are there. It was a feat to behold, and you're just trying to hold on and capture it, you know, in, in as many cameras as you can. And then there's other performances, you know, like Shobida, who's this wonderful, you know, she holds so much pain in her as a performer, and also she's just blindingly beautiful, you know, in person and on camera. And, you know, our conversation was centered around music and art, and I, in fact, I would clear the set and just play music for her, you know, mm -hmm. for a while. And kind of, you know, that would imprint the, the set with a feeling of where, you know, everyone, even the focus puller now is like, mm -hmm. kind of, it's changing the way he's focus, focus pulling the shot and, and that kind of rhythm. So it was, it was really interesting um, in terms of writing, but a lot of it was rewriting on, you had this plan and then the border would close. So we had to totally rewrite the scene day of, or, you know, the bathroom that we were meant to shoot in wasn't ready and we had to change that or I broke my hand mid shoot and all the choreo had to be changed. And, you know, we lost an actor or this and that. So every time like you'd come in with a crazy plan that then would, you'd have to totally throw it out on a whim and be willing to adapt. Did you find that on, on your stuff? Your yeah, work? Yeah. And, and how does it work when you start? I mean, I have a little tadpole budget. You're swinging now at the nope level, and it's like, how do you maintain that fluidity? How do you keep your shoulders down? And how do you? I know on every level of process, shit goes wrong. Doesn't matter if you're at ten million dollars or a hundred million dollars. You know, more money, more problem, more weight. How do you, you do know, it? It's all. It's it's the team that you put together. As you know, it's the more the more people who kind of have your back yeah. and you and support you, and know what they're doing better than you know. What you're doing, I mean, you—it's—it's—it's that's how the thing is. You're building a—you're building a team, yeah. And you know, yeah, your the the cast you build is so perfectly cast. Yeah, they're a good bunch. And they are, and you're right. Charlotte is kind of like he's kind of like your little rel for me. You know, you realize <laughs> yeah. like, oh, sometimes you have this little. Was well, he ad living a bunch? Yeah, you can yeah, feel when, it. You yeah, you feel realize it. when someone has that. Uh, ability, yeah. and um, you should let them go. And even if the even if the improvisational moment doesn't make it in, it's the the you, you can tell when somebody's yeah. uh, allowed to sort of live and be real in there if yeah. they can, if they prefer that. So yeah. one of the main things that you know I remember in our early conversations, but the one thing you keyed on on very quickly was music. Mm -hmm. You have a very kind of like you have an ear for rhythm and sound and music and that plays a big part of your process but you know mm. you managed to get us some cool songs <laughs> well yeah i mean one of my favorite parts of any movie is toward the end you know there there are if if you can get some good just being able to play around with the music can so yeah. greatly affect the film yeah that that the song that yeah on the the credit roll of course you know so just anything that gets an audience's head going like this it's yeah. like it's is a good moment but um, you know, I thought the choices you made were spot on, yeah. and you were you were very you know. Sometimes we would come down to okay, yeah. this is <laughs> this is what like 
you know, the 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 kid in me wants in the yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah. This is what the storyteller wants, and yeah. like these kind of choices. And you, I saw you go th yeah. through these moments. We put the wrong one in sometimes, and then we watched it back together. And we're like, ah, that was yeah. Scary. How do you feel about uh, the directors you've worked with now that you've gone through the gauntlet? Well, you're kind of one of them now and, as well, in a different <laughs> well, capacity. I hope like, we get to yeah, do one. But I, it's I, coming. I think like the directors I worked with, they, they've all made, like. Through just osmosis, I, I think I'm not really a technical actor, so I rely on putting my whole self into it, and I I'm fully offering myself up to this person, and 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 I, I I'm maybe a bit masochistic by nature, so I'm not the best with compliments. So I'm like just you know, I really just offer myself up, and I think you know, those ones that have really nurtured me found f allowed me to be confident is the thing, you know, and that's what I. That's the. I think that's the main priority of a director is like if you can instill confidence in the people that you work with. Because every day on set it can feel like a battle. So, in every actor, I I, I knew the days going. I knew we're never going to get this set back. It's a monsoon rain outside. We're absolutely effed. And I'm like, it doesn't matter if we have to do this 50 times. We are going to get this together. And that all of a sudden just changes an actor because the pressure goes away. And they know you're in it with them. You're in the trenches with them. I got that from Danny Boyle, you know, who really pushed me to find a stillness. A lot of Slumdog and that energy and freneticism that him and Anthony Dodd Mantle, the cinematographer, has found its way into this. Garth, who I did a film Lion with, and David Lowry, those two brought the philosophy, the kind of the more bold brush strokes, you know, the stillness, those kind of more spiritual moments. And then you came in and, and helped me, you know, just find the fun and the laughs and also like I said, the music and, and those finishing moments are the most crucial moments of a film. Yeah, that was really a blessing, man. It, it was an honor to get to produce this movie and you direct the hell out of it and you act the hell out of it. And I love you, this is the beginning of a beautiful thing, my friend. <laughs>